Okay. So welcome everyone to the developer summit for the dashboard. And this is the agenda that we have today. I will share my screen as well. So to see it. I have few topics added over there. And before I go over to the tentacle planning, I thought maybe I can start with some of the highlights that we did on this grid. Uh, I hope my screen is open. Yes, and it is. Okay. So in Squid, I think we have uh, did a couple of improvements on Squid, like you know, rearranging the navigation layout. I'm not sure, Ankush, you have we managed to publish a blog post around this one in the end, or is it still in review or in progress? Oh, it is. I'm here, Yuan. Oh, I think it's still in progress. I would say I wasn't able to finish that up. I think okay. there are some comments from you pending over there that needs to be wrapped up. Okay. Yeah, soon maybe we can try to publish that one to the community. Uh, and there are some CFFS improvements. I think last uh, for the last couple of releases, Reef and Squid, we were mostly focusing on the CFFS related areas. So we have provided a lot of management uh, functionalities there. and. The latest one being the snapshot and clone management uh, some option to there's a management for snapshot scheduling uh, some caps or managing on this ffs and and we also provide some helpers and for on how to mount a specific volume so if you click uh, on a volume and if you you have this option to uh, uh, that says mount and if you click that it, it will give you some cli command and helpers to on how you can mount this particular volume. And that applies to sub volume and I think sub volume groups as well. Uh, so some of the major one, and there are a couple of bug fixes as well on CFFS. And on the RGW, we have Im implemented this bucket policies uh, management. Then it also did the add and remove for the bucket tags uh, along with the ACL management. And I think uh, we have also did several UI uh, UX improvements in the bucket form, so specifically added some helpers on what these like micro copies on what these specific items are are, uh, are and some other documentations provided in the form itself. And some monitoring stuff as well. I think the important one is this one, this RGWS3 analytics, uh, something unquestioned, I guess, uh, visualizing you know, per bucket and user analytics data. Uh, and and Kush, do you have anything on this one? Anything you want to say? Uh, I think uh, that's a great addition, I would say, firstly. Uh, uh, so there were missing metrics related to uh, users and buckets for the RGW uh, anywhere in the management stack, whether it's Prometheus, Grafana, and, uh, or the dashboard. But with the help of the RGW team, we are able to get those metrics. And after getting those metrics, we were able to create one RGWS3 analytics graph, which gives a very comprehensive information about how your users and buckets are doing uh, in respect to listing copies and deletes over there. So, yep, if you want to try it out and have any suggestions around it, I think that would be good. Uh, also, around that, we have a, a plan to uh, extend that up uh on how we can how a user can understand if the if their setup is a multi-site setup how how much of the data is copied between the buckets and the user is something that we want to extend uh, right now in grafana with this in these metrics but other other suggestions are also welcome over here over to you Nizam. Nizam, if you're speaking, you're on mute. Yeah, sorry for that. I was speaking actually. Uh, so yeah, I think these are all the major items uh, that we have covered in this grid. Um, some of them require blog posts, I would say, like the CFFS improvements and a couple of RGW improvements that we did along the way, right? So probably we should actually start uh, sending some blog posts in, in the community and uh, send them to the mailing list or somewhere. So that you know they are uh, they are aware of these features being available in the dashboard. 
Um, moving forward with the tentacle thing, uh, I have added these many items in the agenda, something that I thought maybe you know, worth discussing and plan it out in, in, in the uh, for the tentacle. One major thing is the multi-cluster. I think tentacle will be the first uh, release where we are, you know, where we'll be send, uh, releasing the multi-cluster feature. It's right now under development in the um, uh, in the main branch. So we have we have made a lot of progress there, including right now. I think we can we have you know we can add multiple clusters into one cluster. So one cluster will act as a hub, and all the other clusters will kind of act like you know uh, will get connected to this hub cluster, uh, so that you know we can so that we can manage all the other clusters in a single uh, from a single cluster. That's kind of like the idea of this multi-cluster view. Uh, uh, majority of the implementation is already done. Uh, there are few security related improvements. Uh, these are ongoing along with some visual improvements uh, or UX improvements. Uh, but let's see uh, how we can improve this going forward. Yep, I think also the performance improvements over there that we are doing mm -hmm. on the scalability side. Yeah. And just to mention, just to add upon Nizam, your point, I think we also have. Uh, with this management of the multi-cluster, we also have a comprehensive monitoring around it. So our, our Grafanas are adapted to um, adapted to handle the multi-cluster. So if you have multiple clusters and you connect your clusters, you'll be using a single Grafana to monitor all those uh, all those clusters from a single view. You will not require multi switch between multiple Grafanas. And same with the dashboard as well. You will just need a single dashboard to manage multiple uh, multiple clusters over there. I think right now also, in addition to that, we are also uh, making sure that the, there is only a requirement of a single alert manager so that the metrics can, uh, basically the alerts can go out from a single alert manager and you don't need a alert manager on each of the clusters uh, you have, right? So I think those are the those will be the additions to the multi cluster, and then we are trying to go full multi cluster around it, and make it good. Yep, I agree. I think on the UX improvements, right? Uh, um, we should have a plan around how to do all those UX improvements based on a design, right? I mean, I think there are some people working to get the designs uh, for us. But whatever UX improvements that we are going to do, apart from that, I think we need to plan it out properly and then deliver those particular changes. Uh, Ashish, I think you have a doc. Probably if you can share that here, I can add it uh, on this one. Or maybe if you have some couple of trackers, right, probably that could be added here as an improvement well, to multi-cluster. Yes, Nizam, I have a list of trackers that is for multi-cluster improvements. Yeah, maybe that, yeah, you can add those list of trackers into this uh, planning book so we can all track all those items better. Mm, yes, sounds good, Nizam. Okay. Yeah, I think the one thing that, you know, I, I don't know how to test, the, you know, would be the performance thing because we will need bigger clusters to actually test this one and i don't think we have them handy for the dashboard developers at least so probably we need to see a way to test this properly in the in scale i guess yep i think that's that's that should be done as part of performance i think we are targeting at least 50 to 100 clusters that can be connected with our hub uh, yeah, but I think performance is a major aspect over there. We need to see how our Prometheus and our uh, APIs react over there uh, to the large scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think every release, right, there is this policy testing that happens. Uh, like I think last time uh, for Squid, it, it happened as well. So maybe we can include them, include the multi cluster in the policy testings, and probably we can. Uh, have some testing around uh, this area.
I don't know, Casey Raros, uh, it, it usually happens around the end of the uh, the Tefris or something, right? The post testings. Or does it happen in between the tentacle release? Casey Raros, do you guys know? Very sorry, I missed the question. Yeah, so uh, I was talking that you know the the post testings that usually happens right in, on every release. Does that ha usually happen on in between a release or after the dev freeze happens? How is the process actually? Which testing exactly? Post scale testing. Is that what you, how it's called? I typed it out in the chat, by the way. I think it's a posy lab, right? And the yeah. posy scale testing that happens. Casey? OK, right. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't done anything on that cluster before. OK. okay. Yeah, I can check with Neha later on. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, uh, don't you mean the large scale testing, LRC maybe? Uh, okay. uh, if that's the case, yes, it happens uh, uh, as far as my memory serves me right. Uh, it happens uh, after uh, running uh, and accepting uh, uh, suits by uh, each of particular components, but before uh, the point, but before uh, the release. So it's uh, first, of all, first of all correctness testing, uh, later performance. Okay, okay, sounds good. And probably around those time I can contact you folks. Uh, Neha as well, try to probably get the multi cluster in scale testing as well. Nia, Yuri, or uh, Laura. Okay, thank you. All right, I think that's. I don't know anything you guys want to mention on the multi cluster. Any, any questions over there? Any follow ups that we need to do? And thanks, Ashish, for pasting those trackers. I think for this multi cluster as well, right? There should be blog posts around it and maybe a recording of how this is done in a cluster which could be a lot more beneficial for the upstream users. Yeah, sure. uh, yes, I'm planning that and uh, I'm going to come up with a blog post soon. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. And uh, the next in the item kind of connected with this multi-cluster behavior as well, the self management gateway. I think one of the uh idea behind this self management gateway is i think the primary reason is the security so that you know, all the uh, monitoring stacks that are deployed on the self cluster can be accessed from a single gateway uh, along with a single user uh, so single username and password right that's the main idea of this self management gateway which is currently under progress mostly in the Cephadium, and there are uh, a lot of dashboard pieces involved in this one too. Uh, the, the, and I think one more benefit that it brings in the UI will be the HA, uh, even if one of the node goes down, right? I think the, since the management gateway is deployed on a reverse proxy server, uh, it can, act as a proxy and get connected with the standby manager so that the failover will not affect the dashboard or the rest api and that can work without any issues that's the major benefit that we will get using this self management gateway um i think most of the works are done i don't know pedro uh, how is it looking right now from your opinion yeah, I think most of the features are in place, as you said. Uh, some works are still in progress, and we're just finishing them right now. Uh, but yeah, it also brings a single entry point, which is 
always a nice addition and yeah, all other features you were mentioning, of course. Is there any improvements plan planned around this uh, gateway, like you know, moving forward, at least on the uh, tentacle itself? Yeah, definitely. I think we will continue to iterate a little bit on it. Uh, we have some plans going ahead, so we will work on that. Uh, and, more specifically, yeah. Yeah, go on. Uh, I was going to say to try to enable it by default, maybe in, in a future, not sure if in, for tentacle, but have it uh, as one of the default options to have the that we're running, uh, to have it on top of the management gateway. As well, there are only advantages, right? And not many disadvantages. So this is something where we're gonna be looking moving forward uh, from the user's point of view and their feedback. Uh, we will also try to upgrade maybe the dashboard side, uh, the integration as to allow more IDPs to connect with it or different options as there are many available. Okay, sounds good. And I think one point that uh, Ernesto mentioned is to maybe deprecate the SAML tool uh, you know, support from the dashboard and instead promote this security gateway, right? And probably leverage the OAuth tool instead of the SAML tool. It's probably something that we can consider more moving forward, right? Yeah, and definitely. Also, but maybe in more in the future, right? After we have confirmed, uh, we have. Uh, mm -hmm. The user's yep. feedback as well as the, yeah, everyone's uh, that the feature is complete. Yeah, definitely. Uh, probably we should also test this with the multi cluster in upstream and see how they are all behaving when they are together. I don't know. I think we are already testing that, but let's uh, test the performance side of those things as well. Uh, if there are any particular issues in the Prometheus gateway as Prometheus as Prometheus. Because you know when in scale, I think the Prometheus also has some some scalability issues. Probably those things we need to test out. Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, long ago there was a, a SAML to uh, improvements tracker created in the upstream by some user and they provided some designs as well, right? And how we can improve that particular SSO authentication. I'll have to check that one probably and see if we are actually in aligned with those designs now with the introduction of this management gateway. But uh, but yeah, probably we should revisit. I, I will try to find that tracker later on and try to send it to you. Maybe you can check that one uh, and check it against the the current design of this management gateway and see if they are okay. But it was like a a, a tracker created by the user. Yeah, I think on Zoom on that, right? I had a look at it. I, I think a lot of the Ernesto's feedback on how we are doing it is based upon that right now. So probably okay. we still need to achieve that up. Uh, I think we are doing it first pass right now, if it is working or not, but Moving forward, I think we need to have a generic design around it so we can adapt to more uh, different kind of IDPs and, and providers over there. Okay, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, so yeah, if, that's, if they are good, I guess, then it's okay. Uh, I will, in any case, I will try to find the tracker. I forgot um, it was there somewhere in my backlog. Try to revive it and I will share it here itself in the document. So we can maybe look into that one later on. Uh, I think this will be all done by the tentacle release, right? Pedro? All the dashboard related stuff and including the multi-cluster uh, scenarios and everything based on the current place that we are going now. I couldn't tell you 100%, but I think that's under the plan. Mm -hmm. Can you also include the trackers here like, you know, for later? Uh, if there are any future improvements planned, right? And if there are trackers open, please try to add it here as well. Okay, sure. Okay, I think that's one of the other features that we will deliver on Tentacle, hopefully. Uh, then we have the NVMe of improvements. I think by own skit, 
uh, Afreen uh, worked a lot on you know getting the NBME of uh, management from the UI available there. Uh, mostly the uh, I think the subsystem uh, listener and namespaces management are already there in the UI. Uh, so that will be there for the tentacle release as well. But what we are planning to do is maybe introducing the gateway groups and other associated stuffs um, in the UI, uh, right, Afrin? I don't know how uh, difficult the gateway groups are right now, but probably a similar design that we have in the RGW section will be used for this one, right? Yeah, I think similar to the RGW one for now uh, so that you can select different gateways but uh, with the gateway groups there are more changes that needs to be involved so that uh, that is there in the improvement like the improvements in the apis and um yeah and things like that so which is actually a plan for future and uh, we will see how much we would be able to make it to that and also the mtls support from the ui uh, these other things kind of uh, we have planned to like, improve on, on yeah. top of what we already have. I think we should work on the MTLS support soon before moving to gateway groups, I guess, because you know, yeah. it's already there. I think the API already supports the, the MTLS, so it's only the dashboard, so you can easily do that. And yeah, for the gateway groups, um last week me and ernesto got together and discussed the api changes how difficult it would be and we kind of um came uh i think after the call ernesto came, kind of like you know came up with how the api will look like and it's kind of more uh, simplified now uh, it's more aligned with whatever we have in the rgw so probably it will be more easier now so whatever gateway that we need to utilize, right? It will be sent in the query params of the request body, the request. And yeah, that way we can switch between multiple gateway groups in the UI. So I think I will, I will need to start with the API changes, but I haven't started it. So I'm planning to do that soon. So probably that's uh, something that we can start sooner and the gateway groups implementation. And again, for this NVMe of improvements, maybe a blog post would be better after you, if you want to write it out. Sure. All right, that's next one is a question for everyone, actually. I think we need to plan out for workflows, right? I think we discussed some workflows to be done, but we haven't really uh decided on which of the workflows to be prioritized like the disk replacement workflow i think that's something that we discussed a while ago so uh yeah any other workflows that you guys someone wants to suggest here I think one we already included mm -hmm. the workflow for the multi site, right? And ah, if yeah. you want to mention it, uh, but I think that's a good workflow to have because uh, the the looking at the complexity right now uh, of creating the multi site setup, I think we try to make it easy for the user. Similarly, I think for the NVMe office will, I think we should have kind of a workflow for. Uh, creating all the resources over there because there are multiple resources and as a user right it really gets difficult for them to understand how they are interconnected uh, uh, similar to that i think of fs workflow as well uh, workflow i'm calling workflow but probably ease of uh, use ease of use over there uh, to create a kind of a directory structure over there. So probably we already have a directory structure displaying over there. So a user maybe can create uh, resources like sub volumes and, and a sub volume group from there itself so that they don't need to 
uh, hop between multiple pages and 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 not understanding what exactly they are doing so yeah i think it if we are calling a workflow ease of use uh, i think yes we should target that up i think a lot of lot of the lot of places we can ease out uh, things in my opinion yeah sounds good i think the multi site automation is something that is good because you know uh, leveraging the multi cluster management that we deliver we are kind of automating the multi site uh, setup between two clusters and uh, basically you can just select the clusters that you want your multi site setup to be available and we just you know, set up the multi site accordingly this is like a two three steps wizard right ashish i think three steps wizard where you can select the ram zone groups and zones and all those stuff mm, yes and uh, there's pr attached to this tracker and uh, there's a screen recording of the feature as well so if anyone wants to check it out yep it's available sounds good that's a good one uh yeah gauro go on it would be good to have a rbd mirroring workflow as well yeah exactly that's something that is next on our plate uh, so once this one is complete i think we'll focus on maybe the rbd mirroring work, uh, workflow by utilizing this multi cluster scenario uh, i don't know if do we have a tracker uh, and kush or ashish i remember we discussed that a while ago uh you yeah, have no upstream tracker i think to know but yeah. i can create one and but i should here okay sounds good i could be great uh, yeah once this rgw related works are done right maybe we can try to utilize this um uh, in 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 you know implement this mirroring as well it's rbd mirroring yeah i think uh, before that we are trying to improve the uh, rgw or oh, no not that rbd mirroring page itself to show some comprehensive information and not have like multiple tables like we have right now so yeah making it easier to use firstly and then probably we'll start with automating the uh, mirroring over there So I think that's two-step process that we are taking to ease out the whole workflow. Mm -hmm. Probably we should have a good design around this uh, uh, this, um, this RBT mirroring table, right? So far, uh, it's just some tables lying around on different areas, but yeah. should actually properly design it with some help of the designers. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I think good point you brought up. I think yeah, it needs a good design. Probably discussions over there. Ashish and I went over some of the discussions around it. Uh, I think there was earlier plan as well to uh, improve this, uh, uh, improve improve this page, right? Uh, and there are there were PRs that are abandoned over there that that we can take as a. uh starting point and build on top of it there are good discussion on those prs around how we want it to be implemented mm -hmm. yep. yeah so we can uh, uh, revive those prs and try to see how we can improve them and get some help from ux designers as well i think same would apply to the other workflows like in the nvme of i think that would involve Uh, some collaboration from the uh, NVMe of team as well to properly design a workflow. So let's see how we can try to design around it. But I don't think I don't know if we can commit you know on tentacle for these workflows. But let's try to have discussions going around on these items, this NVMe of and this RPT uh, mirroring. and maybe we can try to uh, get them in but as this maybe the disk replacement workflow it could be done easily because i think uh, ernesto recorded a video a couple of months ago or years ago i think we can try, uh, utilize that video to create a disk replacement workflow from the ui it would be simple three to four clicks i guess you can just automate them Yeah. 
that's a good idea yeah let's just get the id of the disk or something and just id of the disk to be replaced and the one that needs that can be replaced something probably you can have a simplified workflow over there the ux is the most complicated part but let's try to see how we can do it any other workflows that anyone can think of uh, based on our recent experience yep i think uh rgw multi-site failover mechanism is uh, one thing okay i think we planned for it a while ago right uh, multi-site failover okay so when the time comes maybe we can sync up with the rgw team and try to create a design around it as well um, yes. okay after tentacle some of them after tentacle okay uh the next thing i want to discuss is was the future of the carbon uh right now we have applied carbon uh, uh to the i think to the data table and we are up, already applied to some of the forms and also on the side navigation bars right so uh we need to plan uh, so i think this is how the dashboard looks now if someone you know has not seen the latest dashboard <laughs> you can see we are utilizing the carbon uh, table or a carbon data table in order to uh, uh, view or, or visualize some or most of the table in the dashboard also some of the forms like the rbd are now moved over to carbon and the file system forms are right now under progress so eventually all the all the pages in the dashboard will be uh, you know carbonized uh, but uh, even though we have done that i think evo have we removed the dependencies like the data table from the package file yes the all data table is completely removed okay so we aren't relying on anything that's good no thank you and yep probably going forward we need to replace all the other small elements uh you know ui elements with the carbon i think that's like a niche thing because right now if you see here if i go to the notification right it's like still bootstrap it's not carbon yet and most of the elements uh, are still bootstrap so i think by the end of the tentacle release we'll be able to completely migrate the the whole ui to carbon and the things that we are plan planning to do around this one are the uh, performance testing because we want to be uh, we don't want to lose our performance or whatever performance that we had on on the previous uh, data table so we want to keep them as it is so i think evo uh, is looking into some of the initial performance testing regarding these new elements uh, and eventually we'll try to scale test with help of some more people in the community and see how we can uh, if see if there are any real performance issues with this particular view this particular change mm -hmm. That's the idea of it. I think, uh, I don't know, Evo and Chris, do you guys want to mention anything here? No, I think we covered most of the things over there. Yeah, I think it's an ongoing effort. Uh, I, I think, um, and, and we need to ensure that whatever new workflows we add, right? We need to make sure we are following the carbon guidelines over there um, and not following the pattern fly way of doing stuff. So that could be a good check to have uh, for the future workflows. Yeah, sounds good.
I think going forward, our our designs can be based on the carbon. Uh, uh, I think carbon provides a way to create mockups. Uh, even you were uh, using some tool to create mockups using carbon, right? Yes, uh, I was using Figma, and with Figma, you get access to the the carbon uh, design kit. And then you can create screens, like you can create mockups on on Figma with all the carbon elements there. Mm -hmm. I can uh, I I will look up uh, where I I don't have it easy here for, because it's been a while since I last used it, but I will post it in the in in the in the channel a link to to mine. Okay. And yeah, that that can be used as a as a basis. Sounds good. Thank you. If you paste it, I will try to put it over here as well. So, future maybe we can, whenever someone wants to design something, uh, they can utilize this. Uh, yeah, cool. That would be easy. Something that is connected to the carbon move is the uh, the dependencies, the mostly the front end Angular dependencies. We haven't upgraded our Angular in a while. We are still in Angular 15, which is um out of support uh, i think or i think the security supports are closed for this angular 15 right evo or you should look into yeah yeah so th that was one of the main motivators to uh change to replace the old data table by the carbon one was because that that one was not updated in many years and because of that i was not able to to migrate uh, Angular to the latest version. Uh, now with that out of the way, I can proceed to to do that to to port it to the the latest version. Okay, sounds of good. Angular. That would be great actually. And along with that, we will need to actually is you know bump whatever other dependencies that we have. Uh, some of them at least one by one, or maybe in a PR. In a single PR, maybe we can include most of them as well. But I guess we should do them uh, soon for Tentacle, uh, because right now it's kind of like security CVEs might be uh, coming up a lot on those older versions. I see. Yeah, no, yeah, I will do. I think I'll use that strategy that we talked about and having like uh, one uh, in one PR have one commit per version. And then for Angular. Maybe I could, yeah, of Angular, yeah. And then maybe add one more for any other uh, updates or versions of other libraries. OK, sounds good. Yeah, that would be great, actually. Uh, sounds good. Uh, anything anyone wants to bring up on this carbon and the dependencies topics? I would move the uh, test coverage to last, and maybe we can discuss the monitoring stuff. And you will have to help me out here. Uh, what are all these stuff that we are planning for the monitoring, specifically the Prometheus, Grafana, and all those stuff? New charts to be implemented, metrics. Uh, good question, I would say. Uh, I think one thing is we already discussed is the multi-cluster view that is coming along, right? Uh, with the with the tentacle, so there would be an uh, another Grafana that would be a hub hub clusters uh, Grafana page where you can see high-level metrics of all the clusters that you have connected to. That's one one important thing. Another one is the um, I think we have already discussed RGW S3 analytics dashboard, right? But I think there need there would be some improvements around it uh, for adding some uh, multi-site related metrics and user can visualize how how the dashboard is uh, or how the sync is happening between the clusters. Um, we already uh, we have already added one graph. Uh, which talks about uh, how many shards have been synced, but I think uh, I'm trying to granularize it to the level of buckets and and its object. Uh, so we will be using the Grafana, uh, the the S3 analytics data that we got, the users in the buckets data. For that, uh, 
other than that right uh, all the all the all the graphs in grafana now support a cluster id uh, filtering so you can filter via the cluster id when you are connected to multiple clusters so all the grafanas are refactored to do that right now so that every every single uh, grafana panel that we have supports that integration uh, uh, so that's another thing what else i think alerts we also talked about so there is uh, in alerts we are planning to add uh cluster id is saying that this class this alert is being raised from this particular cluster id uh we need some improvements on the alert side uh I, when we are talking about the monitoring there needs to be some more uh, data added to it and some more graphs added uh, around it and i think that's pretty much it i think nizam i can i can think of right now no specific things but overall i still think that the grafana needs a lot of updation on a lot of variables that we are using are abandoned and uh, are not being used right now so a lot of cleanups are required over there uh, so maybe i think those cleanups are something that we can focus for tentacle rather than adding a lot of new stuff uh and use uh the newer probably the newer metrics that are added on those graphs okay sounds good i think yeah. we need to update uh, there is this new version of grafana 11 dot something so maybe we can look into upgrading the grafana to the latest uh, uh, major release i don't know how much of the changes that will be uh, coming there so maybe one Grafana 11 release. Yeah, so probably we should look into this doc and see uh, you know, what are all the changes that are there and uh, do a migration for the Grafana. There will be more simplified queries as you mentioned, Ankush. So we can do all, the, all of them in one go. Yeah. Probably asking from every anybody else on the community who wants to give a feedback on the monitoring and wants us to, us to do anything additional over there would be a good thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are some collaborators there in the upstream, right? On the multi on the monitoring. So probably yeah. we can ping That's... them in the chat or mail mail them, see if they are planning to do anything there. Yeah. I think those I think mostly those people are driving these discussions uh, or in these topics right now. Uh, I think there is a bit more involvement on the monitoring side that is required, and and we need to improve over there. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Anything on the monitoring? If not, I think I will move on. I think one other thing that I forgot to mention on the RGW is the thing we have uh, we have introduced this RGW about uh, yeah the granular bucket replication policies management there. So I think with the help of Naman, we were able to introduce the sync policies on on UI. Uh, there were a couple of issues identified around it. I don't know. Uh, um, now, Naman, do you have some trackers around the issues that we mentioned, specifically with the delete and all? Yes, Nizam. I have one uh, PR ready for it to review. So once it's merged, then the issue will got fixed. OK, OK. Sounds yeah. good. So the idea around this bucket replication is that you know on the bucket creation form, I think I can show that. On the bucket creation form, we have a new field called replication, which you can enable. And by default, the dashboard will go for a bi-directional sync policy creation with some default flows and pipes. And that pipe ID will be used for applying the replication policy to the bucket. So if the multi-site is configured, I mean, we will enable the replication and that will allow to create you know, granular bucket sync 
So I think we have uh, the implementation there. Uh, probably by Tentacle, this will be available to the community to test out. Um, and one question to Casey. Uh, I remember there was some S3 related improvements happening, I think authentication happening in the RGW while ago. You had some PR, some design documents and all regarding that, right? Was it was it finished or you were looking to implement something in the UI as well for the S3 management? So can we take use of that one? Uh, authentication, are, are you talking about the user accounts feature? That's yes. Big, okay. Yeah. Um, it adds new IAM APIs to like create users and groups and add policy and stuff. And so I do think that um, I mean AWS has uh, the UI for all of that stuff, and I think it would be nice to have in the dashboard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think if that's complete, right? Maybe then probably we can look into the S3 management from the UI. Uh, what do you think, Angush? Is there any 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 issues that you see around that one? Especially management. Uh, yeah, I think no such issues. I think we need to evaluate, in my opinion, right now. I have given a thought around it. Firstly, we need to start testing it out from on our end. But uh, to be really saying right, uh, how the dashboard is designed, I think it will take a lot of uh, design opinions or design things over there on how do we want to enable this app as dashboard is not just rgw right it also has block and file so we need to make sure how uh, uh, i am authentication happens when you go to the rgw page and then your user is able to create and do other stuff over there uh, probably maybe some meetings with casey require to understand the architecture of it better and then we can think about how we can implement that architecture on the ui side is something that i can think of right now i don't have any design in my head that that we can go with but i think we need to start uh we need to start thinking about it i think it's a good feature to have uh, uh, in the dashboard if it is implemented in the on the rgw side okay jesse you have your hand yeah that that just reminded me. I mean, the 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 goal of the account feature was to um, give end users the ability to create and manage their own users and access keys and stuff. And so, exposing this in the dashboard for only like the cluster admin persona doesn't doesn't yeah. really cover that. And so, it would need some some authentication for the end users to log in and and do their thing. And I think that's what what you guys are just talking about. Yeah, I think we are actually uh, designing our API in order to support multi-tenancy to the RG, to the any of the user. So if the user has specific RGW role, right? Uh, we are thinking maybe we can try to add more uh, conditions to the user so that the access will be restricted to specific RGW user. In this case, it may be a three user. So he can only see or manage only that particular S3 uh, components you know, that is articulated with that particular user. So the multi-tenancy uh, of dashboard user is something that we are designing from the API now. Probably we'll try to uh, deliver that first and then rethink the, the whole S3 management from the UI. Okay. Probably these things we can plan it out and probably try to deliver in the future. So I'll just add them. At least the multi tenants will be can be included in the tentacle. The S3 management with the proper design, I will uh, put it on this future roadmap items. All right. Thank you. Uh, so that's it. And now we have the test coverage thing. So recently we have been merging a lot of PRs, right? Uh, in the mostly in the API, at least on UI we have test coverages uh, being done in a in a good 
way. But in, in, in APIs, I think we are missing a lot of test coverages there. Uh, so I think that's one area that we need to improve. Uh, this is mostly a developer uh, discussion, actually. But anyways, I wanted to include it here. So probably whatever features that we delivered here, like the NVMe of uh, APIs, uh, the RGW uh, multi-site improvements that we did, all of them should have some level of API testings to ensure that ensure that nothing is broken over there. Uh, I don't know, we, Ashish, uh, is there any plan to include any RGW API test, uh, multi-site API test uh, to the dashboard? Something that is something that we can do. Some kind of mock or automation. Oh uh, yeah. So the uh, basic multi-site setup or between two clusters. Yeah. But we can test some of the other things in the unit testings, right? Mock some of those data and try to test them. Yes, right. right. We are lacking the mm, yes. unit testings as well and on the API side. So probably we we should look into improving the test coverages there. Um, last time we discussed to maybe implement the code co or something, some some of those steps to measure our code coverage and try to not uh, deviate a lot from those code coverage that we already have, right? Something that something like that maybe we should be doing here. I don't know. But in any case, we need to improve our test coverage on all, all those features that we deliver and try to add more testings there. I think for the NVMe of uh, at least we uh, we will need some improvements to the VStart cluster in order to deploy the NVMe of. Uh, I don't know how we can do that either. But we will also need the help of CephADM. So one of the idea that we have is to improve the test orchestrator to uh, I don't know support the. Uh, NVMe of deployment using the test orchestrator, and that would mean that we can test the NVMe of using a VStart cluster, uh, which would be nice actually. Support CephADM operations. Maybe it's something to look at, and you know, going forward, that would help us with all those testing pain points and improve uh, those areas. And so we can catch the test failures easily, especially on components like the NVMe of right. Uh, we need uh, some basic level of functional, functional testing there. Something to you know, keep an eye on going forward. Any ideas on how we can improve this one from anyone? Um, not, I mean, if you guys find something you know that would be usable, try to add it in the doc, and we can we'll see how we can include them. And the landing page improvements. I over the course that right, we have discussed a lot of our landing page improvements, and we have lost track of a lot of those things. I think we delivered a lot, but I think we have to deliver a lot more on the landing page. Um, and Kush, is there any idea to involve, or is there any plan to involve any UX designers to this uh, landing page? Uh, yes, I think uh, there is a plan around it. But I'm thinking right now that the, the, at least uh, let me start a bit on basic on that, right? I think we had V2 version of the dashboard which people have liked uh, over a period of time. I think we should try to at least have a parrot, feature parity over there and extend our dashboard to have that information. Uh, parallelly to that, I think we should additionally try to uh, make it uh, better uh, in terms of the usability. Uh, but I think the data needs to be there for that, all the data that, that was already present and we should not be behind it. And with that being said, I think moving forward, once that is fixed, right, we should plan to deprecate the 
uh, landing v2 landing page as well and we should not have it forever because it also blocks us from uh, some of the de development areas right where we need to make sure that we are backward compatible over there and and not breaking the changes on the v2 dashboard so i think that's also a blocker point uh, on that part but uh, yeah on the ux yes i think we we should start having discussions over here we have already discussed a lot of things as you mentioned but i think there needs a there need to be a good design around it which could be uh, which could be mostly but which could be mostly around placing the data right we already have the data just placing it in the right way so that user can uh, see a value out of it i agree uh... Over the last release, I don't think we have done anything major on the landing page, uh, apart from the few bug fixes that we did. Probably we should look into uh, including more features that users have requested over time, like uh, showing the PG information in a more more high level view, rather than just showing inside the PG uh, inventory view, right? So something like that, maybe some help uh kind of thing for the pg as well so they know immediately that the placement groups are uh, uh are you know something is going on with the placement groups and yeah and and some information related to file object and block as well right now we don't have it we have it mostly very safe specific information manager osds pools pgs right but we need to have some information about how many file systems you have, how many uh, images you have, and how many of the uh, buckets are created on the system. So that could be a good information to the user. Yep. We can try to hide some of those items like the MON, MGR, uh, you know, unless there is some issues going on with those things. If there, if there are some, some issues there, maybe we can try to show them to the UI. Otherwise, we can just hide them from the view because it's more more most of the time it's like a constant value say the three or five Ankush, you were uh, mentioning around the same lines right that we had discussed i just wanted to confirm about the yes i think uh, yeah i think all we have discussed about it i think it's 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 the time i think we need to start some improvements around it uh on the dash the main dashboard that we have and another thing is the carbon um so right now the whole overview pages all of the overview pages are made up of bootstrap card so once we remove that right we don't have that uh, once we remove the bootstrap we don't have that uh, card available in the, in the dashboard so probably we need to migrate plan a migration of the dashboard as well so probably we need to look how the dashboards are designed in the carbon world I don't know, Evo. Do you or have you seen any patches of the dashboard overview in the carbon documentations? Uh, not that I can remember. No, but I can. I can do some research and see what's the. I mean, actually, yeah, they do have a lot of data visualization components. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty big library actually of data visualization so that you can use on a, on a dashboard. Uh, so they do have the individual components there. So then we can just arrange it uh, the same way we do now or in whatever way we need it. Okay, sounds good. Uh... Then we should look into it. So in the uh, yeah. so there's a link to the data visualization components on um, carbon okay thank you uh just a time check we are one minute oh. over okay okay sounds good um thank you Ivo. i just added to the note here probably we can look into those later on the only thing that we haven't discussed is the scalability and I think that we have discussed over the course of other features, right? We will need to test the whole thing in scale with the carbon synthesis and all. So, yeah, at the end of the release, probably we can try to do that as well. 
yeah, those are all the things that I want to bring up. Anything anyone wants to bring up here? Any features that they, anything that they want to include in the in our uh, release process? Uh, Nizam, I have added the same uh, thing for a brainstorming discussion. The RGW, RBD, and CFFS part uh, in the user plus dev next week. Uh, okay. It will be great if we can. Uh, can it'll be. Can you be there as well for the discussion? Yeah, I can try to be there. Right. So next week, right? Yeah. Okay. In the Sounds user plus dev uh, next week, um, just to brainstorm. Ankush, I think around the same lines uh, where we discussed about the application part as well yeah i think yeah we are discussing about the pools and the applications over there right or yep. yeah yeah, okay. Bankush, yeah sounds good yeah we'll try to be there i think it will be a good discussion to have yeah thank you all right i think that's all from me uh if there are no more topics probably we can end the call here Thank you, everyone. Have a nice day. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Happy weekend. Thank you.